There is one player that's got to step up tonight and have a better game than he did in game one. Now, Paul Pierce, sure, he gets you to 38 minutes, but he was in foul trouble. They need him on the floor 42, 44 minutes. The points to 27 points, yes. But how about the lack of rebounding? He is their number one rebounder in the playoffs right around 10 a game. The three-point shooting was there, but the percentage wasn't. And then in the last quarter, unfortunately for Boston, an 85% shooter went to the line and missed five foul shots. Dick, all of this, you clean it up, you can steal one on the road. Pearson Walker finished with 27 points. No one else really stood up and contributed. Is that the game plan defensively to make sure no one else does anything? Well, we got to contain those guys. We're not going to stop them. They're going to get their baskets. They're going to get their shots. But we got to make sure the other guys don't go big. Remember the posting up of Paul Pierce. Pierce defended by Martin, working his way in and is fouled. So Pierce, driving to the basket, is fouled by Kenyon Martin. I like that in his game tonight. The reason being, take it to them, get other people who are playing you in foul trouble, shorten your game, and get the feel. Now, we know he ended game four with five misses in that fourth quarter from the foul line, and it was a shame because he's an 85% shooter with always a Midas touch. And it might help if he knocks down these first two free throws to give him a little more confidence off the foul line right. tonight. So you might say game one was an aberration for Pierce off the free throw line as the Celtics take the lead. And the Celtics come out and they have a two on one Walker going around McCullough. Pierce can't follow. What a furious start. You know, I, I, right now, early in this game, the fronting of the post guys, New Jersey penalizing the Celtics. They're making the correct pass, and the catcher is just spinning and dunking. Paul Pierce getting into the paint effectively early on is fouled by Jason Kidd. Pierce connected on his first two free throws. Kidd's foul is his first. First, first time out, there will be oxygen tanks <laughs> at both benches. And over here as well at the table, Mike. Let's not forget that. Well, Pierce reverting to his uh, game one free throw performance, missing the first one here. Five minutes gone by here in game two. And it's 10 to 9 in favor of New Jersey. Pierce, three of four from the line. Walker feeding Rogers off his hands fortuitously, and that will count if it goes. It does not. He's wearing it for good luck these days. Doesn't want to change a good thing. Here is Paul Pierce coming right back with a jumper. You like the answer there. And the main thing is I like that they're finding Pierce quickly, and they're not losing him for four or five minutes. He's getting the ball almost every third time down the floor. That was his first field goal, Hubie. So Pierce with five in the game. Year after year, he's a major contributor to this team. He does it in just a quiet way. He just goes about his business. Here is Pierce driving in again, off the rim, or whatever. They're very, very quick in scoring. Lucius Harris and the rebound by Walker. Deep pass to Pierce for two. Long rebound. Mark Blount in the game for the Celtics. And on the turnover, Boston in the opening minute leading. And Pierce again driving in. No question, he's determined to get to the hoop. Because of the size and nature of this team. And remember, Vitaly Potapenko is missing for the Celtics. Right. Big, wide, strong body, 6'10", 255, 60 pounds. He's out because of ACL surgery. But they knew in the beginning of the year what their team basically was going to be like. They determined certain things defensively they were going to do. One was front the low post. They've lived with it all year, and you see the results of it here. In game one, that lob was being caught and then laid up for a layup. Their rotation guy from the opposite side of the lane is there tonight, and he's getting a piece of that pass. And uh, the ball out of bounds, and uh, it's his last touch by the Celtics as Pierce now, three of six from the free throw the line. Explained because you have to have control of it, he told Antoine Walker. I like the fact that they're going right after Collins and McCullough every time they touch the ball in the painted area. But by the way, Antoine Walker, as you saw the graphic, and Paul Pierce, 3 of 16 combined, and yet the Celtics up by 10 points. So the Celtics have to like their situation right now. And if you notice, very few layup attempts, never mind field goals, so far. Pierce, Jordan, and Jason Kidd, and Van Horn. 
And Horn has scored. Kid has only four. He'll be at no basket. The net foul before the shot. And that will be on Martin. Daniel Martin with his second. And he is appealing now to Ted Bernhardt. They come, they come off that side out of bounds play the Celtics. They swing it to the opposite side and give Pierce the complete side of the floor in isolation. Let's face it. He's tough going left, and then he pulls back to the right. He's a tough guard in isolation. Nets are over the limit with 8.24 left in the second quarter. And Pierce, who uh, we talked about, 85% free throw shooter, thought game one was an aberration when he was 7 for 13. Now you can see it, 3 of 7 from the line. Yeah, he's just not fluid right now. You can see, you can see the pressure a little bit. See, it's not a smooth stroke. He's pulling back a little bit on the shot. 3 of 8 for Pierce. Celtics leading by 12. Uh, an old friend of ours. Uh, through the old days of the five-star camp, but but they're all unselfish guys that are total team players. Pierce knifing his way in through Williams and Kidd, who's returned to the game, and Paul Pierce, along with Kenny Anderson, each with seven as the Celtics steady the ship up again by ten. I'm not sure you realize how strong Paul Pierce is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why he tried to bring out the point of the rebound. Well, I think in the Boston, you have to look at it and say, you're up six, you're having a bad night on the foul line, you missed six, Paul Pierce has missed five. All right, let's take a look at the halftime statistics, at least the significant ones. Both teams shooting under 40%. You'll be mentioned the uh, lack of uh, three-point field goals, but the Celtics have the rebounding edge by eight. Well, we said when you're down 11 in game one, which was a total shock to everyone, that had to improve. Also, take away the layup there. A beautiful ball fake and a great back clap. Anderson with Williams, Pierce, Petit, Walker. And a good save that time. Coaching genius. Here is Pierce block. Great block. McCullough and Martin both converge on Pierce. So both teams doing the shot blocking job, he'll be as you pointed out. Oh yeah, they both have five already. And you never underestimate McCullough. He's got excellent. That was critical. Because Pierce and Walker were six for twenty-two at halftime. They've got to get both of these guys going in this half. That makes sense. Martin and Batie getting the rebound. Tony Batie, a tiger, off the glass on both ends to start this third quarter. And here is Pierce wow. to Walker and Pierce hit back-to-back -back threes. And all of a sudden, the Celtics again are up by nine. He was so deep, I thought we could reach out and just touch him on that release. Celtics on an eight-to-nothing spurt here. Nice little high-low action right there by the Nets. They just didn't complete the pass. But the color slam caught it and made it up there for Van Horn, who was being fronted. Pierce stepping back. Not a good shot. And McCarty lost it. And Petit gets his fourth block. And here's Kenny Anderson. Double team oh. the with a great pass to Pierce, who's fouled. Anderson with a great move after Petit, who is ferocious tonight off the boards and with the shot block. That's the old Kenny Anderson we saw right there because you had Antoine Walker right. sprinting to spot up behind the three-point line, calling for the pass. Anderson kept the dribble alive. He sees the entire floor, looked away, and dropped it off to this guy who will now shoot two. Kenyon Martin with his third personal foul. Now, Anderson knows where Walker is to his left. Instead, his eyes are right there. He's looking back out towards half court, but finds Pierce underneath. Pierce misses from the line. So Pierce now four for ten from the free throw line, struggling for the second straight game. Now, you know, you're looking at this and you're saying, hey, you know, we're, we're up 11. Paul Pierce, one of the all-time great foul shooters that we have, and currently playing, is struggling. If he ever was making his normal number, he would be very comfortably ahead. Here's Kidd and Kenny Anderson getting the job done defensively. He was in Jason Kidd's face. Pierce for three. McCullough. Good. The back foot was set by a smaller man, so he couldn't switch on to the team. Pierce defended by Kittle, double team. Here's Tony Delk in the game and missing the three. And another offensive rebound for Tony Batie. Pierce from three misses. Celtics have become three happy, Mike, 
after those two shots as he went down. Van Horn in particular, he'd be one for nine. Here's Pierce. Kittles defending him. Pierce going up. Only got a piece of that, and then Pierce is fouled. I thought that was a very difficult shot attempt. I thought that Paul, as he gets in there, kind of like cradles the ball. And the, the dunk was definitely not there. Keep an eye on Watch him cradle it. See, I, that, that's a difficult finish. But then again, give him a ton of credit. He's quick to the loose ball. And then once with the good ball fake, he gets himself on the line. He's long, he's quick, he's got explosiveness, and he's strong. Michael, in that Detroit series, he did a magnificent job of rebounding. He averaged 10 rebounds a game, as well as led his team offensively. And he was a bull. And we're seeing it here tonight. This is what was lacking in game one with only the four rebounds. That was a big issue when I looked at that, because he, he's too active a guy to come in with only four. Biggest lead of the game for the Celtics. Pierce has 13 points, had his season's high of 48 against the Nets early in this year. Yeah, we're seeing a different guy here this evening. Richard Jefferson, Lucius Harris, of course, in for the Nets. Want to remind you to come see the NBA's future stars and find out where their careers will begin. Catch the NBA draft live on June 26th. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. on TNT. For Paul Pierce. Now, 7 of 13 from the line, and the Nets call a timeout. This is an issue because he shot 81% for the season. 85% in the first two rounds. And all of a sudden, he's lost the magic of the follow -through. Walker, Pierce, and Eric Williams, the other three for Boston. Yeah, they're in zone right now. They're in a 2-3 zone. Driving in is Pierce. Foul. And uh, Richard Jefferson coming over to defend. Pierce going to the line. He is 7 for 14. And uh, Aaron Williams coming over, getting called for his second personal foul. Right now, let's check out what's coming to TNT this June. Two men. Two great dramas. Take the shot! One network. See Mel Gibson. You were right not to trust me. In Payback. And George Clooney. It's not our war. It is now. In The Peacemaker. Coming in June to TNT. Well, uh, Paul Pierce missed another free throw. He's 7 for 15 now. During the regular season, he got to... Wow, oh, that's a bad move. Now, during the regular season, he got to the line eight times. About 81%. Playoffs eight times. He was 85 percent before game one. Tonight he's been to the line 16 times in this game, and I, I feel badly for him because he's such a, a great young guy and with a lot of heart. He's a terrific team player, and he's going so strong to the rim, and he's not shying away from contact. Here. Is this after that last attempt? Is that in his head now? The, the last attempt was a curveball, right. curveball or slider at the front of the rim. Okay, that's. That's how much his head right now has been distorted by the fact that he knows he's an excellent free throw shooter. He feels he's penalizing and hurting his team. As you said, you, you root for guys that play so hard, you know, and work work at the game. He can't figure it out himself right now. Here's Walker flashing to the baseline. Good ball movement. Pierce. This is an open three. And now you're playing Jersey basketball. I just don't like it. They're down the floor four times now. The Celtics have shot three, three, three. I don't get it. And another perimeter shot by Pierce. Inside I don't know the line. foul shooting that's affecting him, but I just don't like the way Pierce's shot looks right now. It's coming out of his hand. There's no rotation on it. He's just kind of throwing it right by the rim. Right. They should be pressing uh, Delft all over the floor on every inbound pass. Here is the Pierce. And Pierce now Here they come. missing his last eight shots. Three of 17 for Paul Pierce. Ten-point Boston lead. Plenty of time, of course, remaining in regulation. And a great pass from Walker to Pierce. He was fronted, but could not make the one-handed conversion. Yeah, Pierce is close to a T right now. He's on Barnhart, the referee. He wanted a foul on that last play. He thought Jefferson had him by the arm. Walker with 22. Pierce, who is uh, having his problems not only from the field, but once again from the line, has 14 combined, 36 for those two. 
during the year they averaged 48 a game 54 in game one in the losing cause are you liking what you're seeing at the point guard tonight Kenny Anderson had a good first half Delta's having a good second half 27 off the bench for the Nets who are still trailing by double digits as we wind down the three minutes to go in the fourth Pierce and Pierce has not made a basket in the last 18 minutes of this game Get the Celtics lead. Every time Pierce winds up with Kittles guarding him at that end, he goes down to the low post. Jason Kidd starts to come. And Pierce is trying to shoot the ball before Kidd can put him in the double team, so he's avoiding going to the basket, drawing foul. He did not tip the ball where he should have in right. the pocket. They were lucky to come up with it. You're right. And here is Pierce, who has been cold. Oh, remains cold. Off the mark. Kittles and McCullough, they're not getting a lot of looks. Van Horn has had a ton of looks in this game. Kittles committed that foul. Pierce must be hearing a little bit of something on the foul line. He's got a little <laughs> smile on his face after he made that first one. Yeah. Makes them both. That'll make him feel a little bit better plus yeah, well. a seven-point lead. Put the pressure on Pierce to make the foul pass. So Pierce is on the line. He was seven for 13 in game one, nine of 18 tonight. But these are the crucial ones, and he's made three in a row. And, and you saw Jimmy O'Brien right after that made shot by Kidd. He was yelling out to the Celtics. The guys that he wanted down the other end of the floor, he was reminding him, Get out of there, get away so we can make an inbounds pass right away, and it's not congested. Remember, New Jersey does not have a timeout left, and now it is a two-possession game, six-point lead. Antoine, I want you to be very honest with me. I know you had the utmost confidence in your boy, Paul Pierce, but were you a little nervous the last couple of free throws that he shot? To be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth, no. I told him when he walked to the line, big players make big free throws. I take all the misses to make the last four that he made to seal the game, and that's huge. So that's, that's Paul's a great player. He's right now, he's putting a lot of pressure on himself. I just want him to relax, take his time, because he's got teammates, and he's a great player. So he's going to have no problem stepping up to the plate.